in the Des Moines area to shop for just basic household goods. We have a few um, specialty stores with high prices, but nowhere to just really um, a, a full service grocery store that would have you know everything that or almost everything that a household might want. Um, late at night or early in the morning um, or on the weekends when um, you really really might not want to drive all the way to Windsor Heights to you know shop in the Walmart you might just want to walk across the street but there's nothing there and so for that reason people want to live where there's access to conveniences and so my suggestion is to adjust the prices to um, Des Moines um, property value levels to uh, Des Moines cost of living and then also maybe those building owners and developers should band together to either lure a grocery chain here or to create the, the service themselves. Those are suggestions um, that um, may or may not work but at least I, I think it's worth a try. Um, more on um, uh, planning. I'm going to show an article from City View. Um, City View, um, I commented a couple of weeks ago, didn't publish um, articles that I could really use in my show, although they've come up with um, a few very interesting ones in their, in their latest issue that I wanted to share. So uh, let's see, I'm going to hold that up. Road Diet Makes Ingersoll Fit. And it's a nice article. I like it. Um, I'll read a little snippet from it. We were critical of the Des Moines City Council for its decision to approve the restriping of Ingersoll Avenue to change it from four lanes to three lanes, adding a bicycle lane and additional parking at a taxpayer cost of $10,000. We thought the change could result in an increase in crashes and we shook our head in disgust at the idea of further challenging Ingersoll business owners with financial pain. On all accounts, we were wrong. Our concerns proved to be unwarranted as shown through an October report through the city's traffic and transportation division and discussions we had with a handful of Ingersoll merchants. Average daily traffic on Ingersoll has not decreased or been diverted away. In fact, traffic has increased slightly, and many merchants have noticed. The number of crashes has actually reduced. Um, city leaders said this change would calm traffic. They were right. Um, Ingersoll businesses and downtown employers must now continue to work to accommodate cyclists. Bicycle racks are needed to be more abundant. City workers need to keep the biking lanes clean and maintain appropriate drainage. Employers need to encourage employees to ride to work by offering a casual dress code and options to secure bikes. And most importantly, motor vehicle drivers and cyclists need to be patient and courteous to each other. Well, I think, I think that's just great and just terrific that it worked out really well for business owners, for bicycle, bicyclists, and for car drivers that um, making a more sustainable uh, transportation op uh, options on Ingersoll um, with the planning and the lo logistics and improving the drainage. Um, all these are great, uh, and it seems to have been a win-win situation all around. There was so much protest against the bicycle lanes. It was a very huge and controversial issue, but it's worked out really well, and I hope the city of Des Moines and the Public Works Department uh, feel very encouraged by something that worked out uh, to the benefit of, uh, of the area residents and that more bicycle lanes um, will be forthcoming. Um, Des Moines can be very beautiful um, in the fall and in the spring with the leaves, you know, when the leaves are new and when the leaves are changing colors. It would be great to see that by bicycle. Um, in different parts of the city. So I, I hope more, there's more to come. Um, the final issue about ethanol, which again is another controversial issue here in Iowa. Lapse in ethanol tax break wouldn't be all bad, study says. Um, let's see. An Iowa State University study suggests that if Congress allowed tax breaks for ethanol to lapse at the year's end, the impact would be modest for ethanol producers and corn farmers. Um, 
But the executive director at the Iowa Renewable Fuels Association, Monty Shaw, said Thursday he was shocked by the study. Uh, the U.S. ethanol industry uh, seeks a renewal of the 53 cent per gallon tariff on ethanol imports. Um, Babcock said, and this is Bruce Babcock of ISU, said livestock feeders are less are likely to be affected by higher corn prices regardless of what action is taken on the tax credit or import tariffs. He noted that rising costs for corn reflected in higher feed costs will eventually reduce livestock herds and thus retail meat meat prices. And um, we did talk about, about that before, how ethanol was being protested by a strange affiliation of uh, organizations, uh, meat producers, grocery associations, and then oil industry um, producers were coming against uh, ethanol. And so it's uh, an issue that, and, and then also environmental groups as well. And so it's pretty controversial, uh, the development of that industry. Um, um, I will go on to say that Iowa is the nation's largest ethanol producer. And so it is a serious issue that we should all pay attention to um, here in Iowa. Um, there's, let's see, another issue that's um, related to the stormwater um, topic today. And when I say stormwater, a lot of people assume that, you know, that's just rain, but basically it's any precipitation that falls from the sky affects um, our water management. So I'll put that on the camera. Here's plenty of warning. Keep sidewalks clear. And that's from the... Uh, Saturday Des Moines Register, um, today's um, the 20th uh, Register, and let's see. Fines can pile up along with the snow if it isn't removed. This is by Jason Pulliam, who actually writes on a lot of urban planning infrastructure kind of issues for the Register. Last winter, the city of Des Moines issued 130 1,322 fines, totaling 70,500 for improperly shoveled sidewalks. About 44,775 has been paid. There were 288 fines issued the previous winter and 219 the season before. And we should all pay attention to that because um, there's more on that issue. A city ordinance requires property owners to shovel sidewalks within 48 hours of a snowstorm. In recent years, the Public Works Department has placed more emphasis on enforcement, according to Bill Stowe, the Public Works Director. Although city officials end up being the bad guy when snowpack sidewalks are not cleared, inspectors are compelled to act. The Public Works Department has fielded an average of 1,254 citizen complaints about unshoveled sidewalks each of the past three winters. Stowe said, quote, Complaints are still the real genesis for how we respond, but we're far less likely to go into multiple warnings and trying to educate people because we think it's pretty clear what obligations are, and that's to clear sidewalks so people can safely walk or use them 48 hours after a storm, end quote. And my understanding from that is that the, the gloves are going to, uh, no more um, coddling, uh, that they're definitely going to be in enforcement mode uh, this winter. Um, so <laughs> that should be something to see. Des Moines was blanketed with about 60 inches of snow last winter, well beyond the 36 inches recorded in an average winter at the city's airport. Iowa's, Iowans are in for above-normal snow and ice, according to a long-term forecast issued last month by AccuWeather in State College, Pennsylvania. So Bill Stowe will be in the Des Moines Applehite studio uh, for this show on Saturday, December 4th from 1 to 2. You can send your questions in for him by me, or you can actually chat live um, when he's in the studio. Um, and in the meantime, uh, questions and reports of improperly shoveled sidewalks, if it does snow, can be directed to the Public Works Office at 283 49 Five zero.